Ding, 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 ding. Welcome back. Is that why you guys are always off key? Shane Dawson, <laughs> yeah. 2K16. Yes. Welcome back to the Jenna Julian podcast for another episode of us being Jenna Julian and doing a podcast. Podcast. Pop, pop. Come get your podcast. <laughs> We're going to do this the whole time. My <laughs> arm is already very tired. You want to hold hands the whole podcast? Yeah. Oh. I think we might get demonetized for just being gross. <laughs> if we this do that. This video is demonetized. Already Y'all demonetized. Y'all need to stop. Guys, this episode is brought to you by The Skim. Get your news from the free daily email newsletter known as The Skim. It is amazing. Just fit it into your routine with coffee in the morning. It helps you get informed on what's going on in today, in the world, without all the nonsense that exists on the internet. It's very concise, easy to read, giving the information that you need. Go to theskim, T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. It's completely free. free. Subscribe, and you're entered to win a $250 Visa gift card. Also, guys, Calm. It is the app that helps... Oh, man. I love that app so much. It helps mindfulness. It Except helps, Bunny barked at you while you did it, but yeah. It helps meditation, guided meditation. Uh, I've been doing the daily calm as much as I can. I've not been doing it every day. I will admit that. But I'm doing a lot, and I really like it. I pop my AirPods in, press daily calm, and it's 10 minutes. It's just, uh, it really is nice. Um, it's an app that you can download right now. All right? So go to calm.com slash Jenna Julian. Get 25% off premium subscription when you use that URL. More on that later. Tell them what Bunny did when... (laughs) Oh, okay. So we're going to talk a lot about Bunny today. First of all, is it cool if my hair looks like this? Because that's what it looks like. Yes, it's cool. Also, you you. asked that question way too late. Because if it wasn't cool, we're already live. What about this? You can hear her like grumbling back there. Poofy Ray. What? (laughs) I don't know. Just checking to make sure everything's working. Okay. Um, one day, I, I've i been trying to do calm like in the morning. Sometimes I'll do it in the afternoon. But like if I can help it, I'll wake up and I'll sit up in bed as I'm like drinking coffee or whatever, drinking water, just kind of getting ready for the day mentally to get out of bed. And if I need it, I'll play, I'll play the daily calm. And one day I was sitting in bed. You were asleep. And I had woken Hell up. Hell yeah, I was. And I, play, I didn't have my headphones, so I was just playing it on my phone. And I was just sitting there doing the daily calm and I you know you try to shut your eyes while you're doing it because you know it helps it helps with the meditation and just kind of being mindful of where your head is at and everything so I'm sitting there like this and the woman's guiding me through the daily calm and I'm like I'm feeling so good I'm like the day's about to be so good and then I just hear (laughs) and I'm like freaked out because I'm in this like relaxed moment and like the she, loudest the loudest most in, bark. intense bark <laughs> yeah. and it was bunny because i don't like she saw because she can see me in bed from her crate when i'm sitting up when i laying down she can't really see my head because yeah, the bottom of the bed she knows you're there but yeah she's, i feel like i've already told the story did i already tell the story i don't know i don't know it was really funny though you were you were like essentially meditating and closing your eyes and she thought something was wrong with you yeah she thought she had like had never <laughs> seen me with my eyes shut or something I think I told this story on the podcast. Am I crazy? Whatever. Anyway, that happened. That was funny. Um, Bunny she has like found her herself right with a new injury. A uh, couple days ago, mm. we were literally just about to start stream. It was the evening. Everything was normal. And Jenna calls me into the other room and says, look, there's yeah. bloody paw prints well, on the had, ground. Which had, dog is this? We had just eaten dinner and then we opened the doors to like let them out and walk around and stuff. Mm -hmm. And not even five minutes after I opened the doors, there's like bloody footprints on the ground. Like what the hell is going on in those five minutes? Yeah. So then (laughs) Jenna deduced that it was coming from Bunny's foot because she saw her foot was a little bloodied up. And so um, we looked at it and first of all, Bunny has been such a champ through this whole thing and it's no surprise because she is one of the strongest and most resilient dogs i've ever met Mm. um but the whole time she has been so good um it has been a really tough couple of days it's been fucking gnarly we haven't really explained or shared everything that's happened on the internet because we just kind of been in this world of like dealing with it especially the first like 24 hours when we got her back from the vet um basically she had stepped on something we didn't know at the time We've since found out what it was. It was this piece of scrap metal that was sharp as a motherfucker sitting on the side of our house that she stepped on. Uh, and it cut 
like the webbing in her paw and it was a bad cut her it was like paw, yeah. it was a, yeah it was a bad cut and we were like we can't we can't just put a bandage on us. So we got to take her to the vet. So we took her. It was the emergency vet. She wasn't vet. like yelping or in pain or anything. She was just walking around. She, she left the blood trail over the entire house. She couldn't care less. Yeah. yeah. And um, not only that, she let me look at it, which was mm-hmm. very good because right. dogs can often snap or growl if yeah, they're Yeah, get real hurt. nasty. So, um, so we took her to the vet and they, you know, they were like, all right, we'll take her. And we handed her the, le- the, the woman the leash and Bunny was like, okay. And she walked away with the, with the vet so well. Like, I mean, Jenna has always said, you know, greyhounds are notoriously good at being handled by strangers because that's kind of the life that they know mm-hmm. when they're racing or doing whatever they're doing before they're adopted. So she goes off with the vet. Um, she calls us in half an hour later, updates us and says, hey, it's not full thickness, the cut, which I think means it didn't like go all the way through. So we can just like glue it up with some surgical glue and clean it and right. you should be good. And um, turns out, it was full thickness once they cleaned it, mm-hmm. and she did need stitches, but they didn't have they didn't put her under, which Jenna can get into later. But um, they stitched her foot up, drugged her up, you know, gave her a little injection, which I'm sure she hated because that's what she's used to is getting injections or needles. And um, then we took her home, and the last the last like 24 hours, we've gone through a really really tough like realization that she cannot wear a cone. Mm-mm. Um, especially with an injury because, especially with an injury and when she's on pain meds. Um, the, the pain meds part, she goes into a deeper sleep and wakes up with more intense sleep startle now that she's on the drugs. She does have sleep startle. Like for those of you that watch our Twitch stream, you've probably seen her at some point have a sleep startle. Mm-hmm. She's just laying there. She's relaxing. And a lot of greyhounds, well, not a lot, but I, some of them can have it. I think it's common greyhounds. in greyhounds. Yeah. Because what happens is that when they're, you know, kept as racing dogs or, you know, wherever Bunny was. It's a long time until someone's like touching them or near them when they're sleeping. You know, they're in a little crate or pen or wherever they are and their food is theirs. Uh, No one's touching them. No one's near them while they're sleeping. It takes a long time for someone to come in the building or turn the lights on or start walking. You hear other dogs barking or getting excited. There's like a lot of time before anything is near you while you're sleeping, essentially. So... Uh, for dogs that spend years in that environment to be like on a dog bed, you mm-hmm. know, anything passing by or any noise or something that just wakes them up out of a sleep, their first reaction can be like bark, 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 attack. What is that? You mm-hmm. know, because it, it startles it them because yeah. they're not used to like, being vulnerable while they're sleeping. Yeah. It's like what marbles has, but it's actually a, a safety <laughs> concern because it's not marbles. Right. Um, Because if you touch marbles while he's sleeping, he wakes up barking. (laughs) What the fuck he doing? Wakes up barking. (laughs) That's what. It's a. That's a more intense version of what Bunny has. But with the drugs, the pain meds they put her on, it was more intense because her sleep was deeper. And then when she woke up, she was more, you know, delirious. Well, and she had. We had the the like hard plastic cone at the recommendation of the vet, which the vet. Gave us a couple options yeah. with her stitches, but, and the vet did honestly. She was wonderful, amazing, yeah. But one of the options is to put her under to give her stitches, but that's like you know greyhounds, their bodies don't metabolize the anesthesia the same way as other dogs, so it's important. First of all, that that's like a last resort or something that she putting them under, right? Yeah. And um, that you have a, a doctor that understands uh, how to use anesthesia on a greyhound. But we didn't have to do that, thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, they were they just gave her local lidocaine and stitched her up, and she was a champ. We were out, like, how did she do? They were like, she barely even right. cared. So then she, it was her recommendation to use a hard cone, which we've used with the other dogs. Kermit, when he was when he got fixed when he was a baby, he, like their faces are so long. So his cone was like super long and narrow. It was yeah. like a tube on his yeah. head. And I used to call it his avant-garde cone because it was yeah. purple and like this like, <laughs> long like toilet paper roll on his head. <laughs> and then Marbles was like a satellite dish. Like it was so wide. <laughs> it was like, oh man, they looked so funny. But you know, uh, we've had experience with the hard cones with the other dogs, and they've all PG PG was fine with us. They were too. all. I mean, they're oh. uh, everything about Bunny has illuminated how freaking easy these guys are. Right. I mean, so, not that she's a difficult dog, but like things like that you would not really think about, like a cone. 
and that being a serious <laughs> issue. Like these guys, remember, they have I'm cones, but it's like, who cares? They're fine. They don't care. I remember when Peachy had her cone and she just would like, she would go under the covers with it, like as hard as she could. <laughs> yeah. She would do this oh, thing. Oh God, she was so cute. She was really but cute. anyways, it was the vet's recommendation to use the, uh, the plastic cone um, because her face is so long. If we put a soft cone on her or something else, it doesn't she can still get to it mm -hmm. or easily work around it. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the plastic cone, there were parts of her bandage that she could still easily get to because she just has a long <clears throat> face and neck, you know? Yeah. Um, and we brought her home and she was drugged. Well, first of all, when we picked her up at the vet, you know, you could tell instantly she's back in that 100% fight or flight trauma mode. That we got her in. Yeah, there is no, like, she doesn't make eye contact. She doesn't respond. Uh, it was, like, right when we adopted her, sort of. Oh, she, you know, she wasn't freaking out when we I mean, got her, she, but, she yeah. knew who we were, but there was no, there was no yeah. bunny personality happening. She's back in the, like, I'm just trying to get through this moment and this moment and this mm -hmm. moment, which was really, it was just hard to see her mm -hmm. like that again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I was yesterday, I was like, is she just going to regress back into this like space, you know, and feel like she's not coming home or is she going to go somewhere else? No. And we brought her home with the cone and we had her lay down for a little while and she was doing okay. Yep. And then she had a, like a terrible sleep startle. It was the next, it was the next like morning we were hanging out. Ugh. And we were, we had the cone on. She, we, it was brutal, but she got through the first night with the cone on. She kind of stood in her crate mm -hmm. for like an hour until I went over there and I actually like laid her down for her because she was like delirious on drugs and also in this crate, which it's the XL crate. It's the biggest crate we could buy with our money dollars, but she still somehow fills it out, especially with that cone. Mm -hmm. It was tight in there. And so I finally laid her down. She, she made it through the night. Because anything that touches it, she starts freaking yeah, out. Yeah, because it makes a noise. And then she's like, what was that? And so the next morning we're hanging out in the game room because that's like her room that's her happy place so we're just sitting at our computers we're both kind of just like there hanging and something wakes her up and she wakes up and hears the cone or feels the cone or hears the cone or something and the yeah. cone drives her to literally run out the room and like leap into the wall smash her head she just into like the wall. jumped into the wall it was like fucking gnarly because she was so scared and didn't know what was getting her and what I mean, she was just totally freaked out. Right. Well, so yeah. She, if you if you have sleep startle as it is, and then you wake up and something's around your head and neck, like she literally thinks her life is over. Yes. So she was like full force, end of the world, freak out, jumps into the wall, and then runs through the house, leaving a trail of like poop. She literally was pooping. She, she was, was like so nervous because she's a nervous farter. Like <laughs> that's what she does when she's nervous. She like farts, mm -hmm. and this was like a really intense version of that. And so. Oh my God, that's like the hardest thing to ever watch. Because like not only is that traumatizing to see your dog do that, but she's running and jumping and freaking out on, on, this, on this bum leg. Yeah. yeah, and we're like, oh, this is just so bad, man. And so after that, we were like... No cone. No cone. There's no... And not only, not only that is like 100% that event means no cone because we can't go through that again. She can't go through that again. But she hadn't even attempted to like go for the wound. And so the cone, I get that's that's the purpose it's serving, but she was so like not present that she was like, you know, normal bunny would be like, yeah, ooh, what's this bandage? I'm going to lick it off. But she's not normal bunny. Yeah. She's like in trauma state. So we took off the cone and we figured if we're directly supervising her, she doesn't need anything. Yeah, she's if, not going for it. Yeah. And if we're leaving the room, we put on her muzzle because we've trained her with her muzzle a lot and she's comfortable with it. Yeah. A lot of greyhounds are. Yeah. They know it. They, she was comfortable with it when we got her. Yeah. Anyway, that brings us to today. Today is the first day she's wagged her tail since oh, the whole thing. Oh, she was so much happier when she woke up today. I've been carrying her up and down the stairs <laughs> just so she doesn't have to, you know, the, the vet was like no exercise, no excess movement, just really try to keep her off the foot. Mm -hmm. So that is where we are. Um, we it, It's been a, a wild couple of days, but you guys have sent a lot of really nice tweets. So thank you for that and the concern and nice comments you've left. Um She's a champ. I mean, there's no other way to put it. She's yeah. she's handling this like an absolute champ. And but it's also it's like a, it's a good experience for us to have because, I mean, I feel like I've always been this way with the the little ones. It's like your dog or your pet. You know, the vet can give you the best advice that they can, but at the end of the day, you know them probably better than anyone. <clears throat> yeah. And I think a cone obviously works for 
a lot of a high percentage of dogs, you know, and a, a lot of people try and do a soft one or one of the inflatable ones. Um, but like it, it's a safety hazard for her way more than her bandage ever. Mm-hmm. Like she could break her one of her legs or like her own neck from jumping into a wall like that. Like at the end of the day, you just have to, you know, figure out what's best for your, your pet. Even if the vet is like, no, you need this hard cone. I'm like, mm, girl, I think I'm going to take it off today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think we're ever going to put a cone back on. I mean, and the weirdest part about the whole thing is that the stitches and the cut she got is like the least it's the, throughout this whole thing has been the least of our problems, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like, yeah, she's going light on that foot and kind of limping at this point. Cause it's probably a little painful, but it's the cone, it's the drugs, it's the vet experience, it's all of that that was like the hardest part, the hardest you part know, for her. like the yeah. actual injury isn't that bad, so. It was the first time that we had taken her to the vet, so it was, uh, I th- all things considered, it, it's a, I don't know, I don't, want it to, I don't want it to sound wrong, but it's like she had a cut, she's okay, and mm-hmm. our first time to the vet is something that like, True. you know, not overly traumatizing. True. And it's but the with, cone has been traumatizing. True, and it's like one of those things. Like when you adopt an animal, the last thing you want to do, especially when they come from trauma, you don't ever want to bring them to the vet if you don't have to. So it like you idealize in your mind, in your mind, like the first trip to the vet will be nice and It'll just be a, a checkup. checkup. It'll yeah. be easy, but that's not how it works out. Yeah. And um, actually, today for you guys, tomorrow for us, we're going to be taking her to the vet to get the bandage removed and checked up on. Yeah. And, and so. I've seen a lot of people comment too that with greyhounds specifically, if you put a baby sock. On, either on the, the foot that is affected so that they're like, what's this? I don't like this. I don't want to chew it. It's just bothering me. Or I've read that some people put the baby sock on the other foot <laughs> because then it distracts your greyhound enough from going after the first. pretty but funny. They're funny dogs. Yeah. And we'll probably we'll probably keep it covered for... She can't walk, go on walks for like seven days. Which and is going to be hard. Another couple of days, she'll have the sutures taken out. She needs that walk, man. She does need that walk, but the I will say the pain meds are keeping her kind of sedated. So. Yeah. But it's just been... <clears throat> yesterday was incredibly difficult, but um, it's just overall kind of hard to see her like that in mm-hmm. general, and it feels like so unfair. You know, we have a pretty big yard, and it's not like we're constantly going out there and combing it for pieces of metal it, it just feels unfair and it feels unfair that it had to happen to her. And it's frustrating when all of a sudden you just routinely let your dog out into your own yard and they come back with a terrible cut. It just, it makes you feel guilty and like sad and it just fucking sucks. Like I wish it didn't happen to her. Like she doesn't deserve yeah. that ever again. She doesn't deserve to feel like I need to heal right now. You yeah. Know? But I mean, all things considered, like you said, it, you know, it wasn't that bad. And looking back on this months from now, she's going to be a better off animal because mm-hmm. of it. It's like an experience that's going to help her. And I know that sounds fucked, but it's like life. Like it's super random what happened, but the way she's dealt with it and her getting through it and her coming out the other end, like already wagging her tail two days later is like. I know. She got excited because she saw Lexi too. Yeah. We had a friend over. <laughs> Lexi came over. And, uh, but anyway. Bunny's doing great. She's resting. She's not. Yeah, but we almost had an issue with Peach this morning. Oh my God. Julian was giving Bunny her pain meds, and Bunny's so smart. So she just eats around the pain meds and spits it out. She spits out the pain meds. So Julian was breaking it up and mixing it in with her food, like pieces of pill pocket with the food so that he can try and trick her. And it's not really working. And Bunny sort of like turns around and Julian, you know, goes to grab her and bring her back. And within two seconds, the silent peach ninja walks in there, dips her head in and starts eating only the pill pockets, obviously, because she loves them. And all of a sudden Julian's like, did she eat those? Did, did she eat those? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I just like grabbed her as fast as I could. And I didn't realize that he had put the painkillers in the bowl. I thought that was just her food. I thought Peach was just eating Bunny's food. And Julian's like, no, that's that's the tramadol. That's, you know, the painkiller Peach for dogs. Peach be like free drugs. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like 50 milligrams of tramadol. So we had to call the vet and be like, you know, can you help us do the math? Is this like a lethal dose? Like, do we need to go get her stomach pump? But we don't even know if she ate it or not. Like, we don't know which dog just took this painkiller. 
oh man, we definitely don't think that she took it. Peach is completely one hundred percent fine. I think but, she yeah. might have had like a little little chip of it, but no, she didn't. And the the vet said it's a fine dose. It's just a heavy dose for her, but she'd be fine. And uh I think judging by Bunny's behavior more so, I think Bunny took the most of it. But I was fucking terrified. I'm like, geez, can you guys just like fucking Dude, chill? Has all been, of you chill. Peach has been on well, first of all, the little three man, like I love them to death. But God damn it. Everything it has to be about them. <laughs> and when Bunny was going through this whole thing, they're just in the way. They're jumping on her bed. They're smelling her. They're just in our face. They When I'm trying to feed Bunny, when she's like drugged out, they're like, ooh, food. And they're like chasing her food. <laughs> I mean, they are like, everything's about them. And I caught Peach the other day. I heard a noise. So I go to the room where we feed Bunny. And she looks like she's about to dive into Bunny's food bucket like a pool. She's standing up like a person and her hands, she opened it. She opened the <laughs> locked food container, the big ass lock. It's up. And she just, and she's just sitting there and I'm like, and she had actually eaten a fair bit of it by that point. So I picked her up and I felt like I was holding two dogs. And, uh, so yeah, that's been, that's been yeah, just like the other night when we, we went to go out and we called an Uber, we literally walk out the front door. You can still see in the house. We can see in the window. <laughs> The second we walk into the front yard, Peach trots into the office. Like she can't see out the window because there's a glare. So we're looking right at her. Trots over to your backpack, slowly pulls out an entire bag of pistachios and starts walking over to Kermit like, Hey, Stamit, mommy and daddy are gone. Got our pistachios. (laughs) Hey, Stamit, I have activity for us to do. You open, I eat. (laughs) See you, and then I, I unlock the door. I'm like, Peach, <laughs> drop my pistachios. But that's what she does. She like she she like filters away things. She in logs her mind. it. Yeah, she has like a a little mini heat map. And she just waits until the perfect moment, and then it's like time to go get those pistachios, mommy and daddy. Yeah, her, I mean, her memory ninety percent is is this like infrastructure she's built in her brain <laughs> to remember locations of obscure food that she could take. Oh, it's just like, it's wild. We shut the door and she just was already in your back. <laughs> Sticks her whole head in. They can open the pantry door. I mean, all of this is just, you yeah, know we, what? We've been having to religiously keep the pantry door like all the way all shut. The way shut. Otherwise, Not because of Bunny. We, that, we were so concerned that Bunny was going to figure out how to no. go in the pantry and steal stuff because no. she's so tall. It's peach. It's if it's peach. open, like a tiny little sliver, if it's, if it's we open, come home even, and there's a whole bag of chips on the couch. Dude, she like, I don't know how she does it, but she opens it from like the- Nothing. The, the, The handle is way higher than she can get. So it's all just like nudging the door. Or she probably can pull it open with her foot or something. Because it doesn't, you know, you close it and it's sort of like one of those doors that just like sort of shut. It's more like a cupboard Mm -hmm. kind of door. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like latch. So you have to turn the door handle. Yeah, it's just like shuts. So she probably could figure out how to just pull the bottom. Because I'm, we're always like, did you leave it open? Did you leave it open? I'm like, no, no, no I closed we it. We closed it, but you have to like fully fucking. Shut. She we, probably we can eventually, figure out how to open it. We eventually need to like zip tie it or something, <laughs> or like have a baby lock on it. A baby lock. Because Peach is a baby. Anyway, I don't know about you, but after this weekend, I could definitely use some uh, daily calm. <laughs> Just don't do it while Bunny's looking at you. She'll Just part don't you. use calm. To relax yourself and be mindful and meditate, but don't do it when your dog's looking at you because they might bark at you. That's that's my little <laughs> side note about calm. But if you're looking to get into some sort of basic meditation or even just like take a moment away from your busy day, um, off your phone, off your devices, just to like reset and be a little bit um, focused on what's going on in your brain, it makes a massive difference. This is something that I... I I'm personally vouching for because I use this. I try to use it regularly, but I also resort to it in moments of stress. And when I know that I need to just like put things away and just kind of calm down for a sec, hence the name, I log onto the Calm app, I put in my headphones and I do the daily calm. And it is just something that it's very easy to do. But when when you realize what it's doing for you, it, you realize how kind of powerful it is to just take that time out of your day to really kind of just invest in yourself mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, it's also really great for falling asleep. It's an amazing tool to help you settle down, to wind down for the day and get yourself ready for sleep because it's it's hard sometimes to to not go from screen, 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 sleep because that's kind of what I do sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. It's what we all do. So Calm is really good um, for helping you get sleep, be mindful, and overall just improve your 
quality of life. So if you want to seize the day, sleep the night, get the help of Calm. Go to calm.com slash Jen and Julian and join over 40 million people that have downloaded. Also, guys, when you're waking up in the morning after your nice night's sleep from Calm, uh, get filled in on what's going on on today's world with The Skim. The Skim is a free newsletter uh, that comes into your email. Very concise, easy to read with um, just kind of the bullet points of what's going on just to help you uh, be aware and in the know about important news stories that you should know um, for your own benefit. Also, so you can dominate work conversations at work at the water cooler. <laughs> just destroy Karen. Karen. Um, you just sign up, you enter your email, and then every morning they send you what you need to know. There's no nonsense. There's no fillers. There's no opinions. It's just here's what's happening in the world in a very easy to read, easy to digest format. Take it. Enjoy it. Do what you will with it. But here it is. Now you are smarter and educated. Go on and, and seize the day. Uh, also, when you sign up, you're entered to win a $250 Visa gift card. That's completely free that you could win money. And you can spend that on whatever you want. You can spend that on a dog. You can spend that on a dog collar. You can spend that on a Calm Premium subscription. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those are our sponsors. Thank Click you, with sponsors. the links below to check, check them out a little more. But yeah, anyways, we had a stressful couple days, but it's good now. We're good, I think. I think, I hope, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Someone told us they wanted us to read creepy pasta. Can, Can I you just explain what creepy pasta? Creepy pasta is the weirdest combination of words I've ever heard. I'm sorry. It just sounds weird. So basically, it's like horror based oh. tales that have spread around the internet from people copy and pasting, which I think the, po- oh. the pasta part of the word is that what pasta means? Like paste? You know, I don't know the answer to that. But can I play some royalty free scary music? Because well, there's like copy pasta. And then this is creepy pasta. I don't know. I found a letter from my stalker. Oh man, these are crazy. So I sorted by most popular on creepypasta.com. A shattered life. So they're pretty long. We might only have time for one. I don't know. Okay. I'm just going to start reading and see what happens. <gasps> I'll play some creepy music. It's a playlist. <gasps> Jesus. <gasps> I don't think I like this. I, I, I got to find a song that's, that's good or else I can't. It's got to be good or else I can't listen to the story. You know? For sure. Why is my browser being so slow? Anyway, so it's like paranormal, horror fiction, scaring you since 2008 is what it says. <gasps> this is good. This is good music. User like generated. This. So most of them are like fictional or whatever. I think they're all fictional actually. <gasps> it's like a Shane Dawson video. Oh. <gasps> For whatever reason, my browser just literally stopped working. Hold on. Mm, this is a good melody. Mm, mm-hmm. Creepy pasta. Let's try this. Is it the website? Maybe. I don't know. This is a good song. Okay. Do you hear it? Yeah, I hear it. I'm just trying to. Wow, it's really good. Wow. I'm sorry for the delay. Give me one second. Do you want to use my phone? Maybe. I mean, I don't know if it's the website or like what's happening. It's literally just not loading. You should get an older iPhone probably. Your iPhone sucks. <gasps> Why'd you shut off my music? It should play in the background. Why don't you have that set to play in the background? I do, but you changed the song. Centuries ago. What is Boy, it? what? <gasps> Ancient feudal Japan. This is not what I signed up for. <laughs> I mean, that's incredibly interesting, and I'm down to watch it some other time. But I was listening to royalty-free, copyright-free, creepy music. Thank you. Right. you okay? You got it out of your system. This is not the song that I chose. <laughs> it changed. What do you mean? It is the song you chose. Did you put on a playlist, or you just? No, I, I'm literally, I went back to the video. Okay, this website is not working. It's just literally this decided. Okay. Um, I'm scared. In general. Like, just about life, you know? 
All right, what 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 uh, genre? Classics, monsters, dreams slash sleep, haunted television, items and objects, places, dismemberment. Ooh. Okay, not that. Dismemberment? Please. No. You want to do dismemberment? I'm going to throw up. How about dreams and sleep? Just not dismemberment. I, I'll actually pass out. Like, I can't. The rake. I can't hear about that stuff. I'm scared. Wait, so this is... Hold on. I'm just... This is creepy pasta wiki. So I think this is... I'm scared. Do you hear this music? It's it's using like oh, dates and so stuff. So much suspense okay. building. It's called the rake. Oh. Look at the picture. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, wait, what is that? Wait, let me see. Oh my! Wait, I don't stop making it move. I can't see. <laughs> <gasps> I really don't like that picture. I really don't like that picture, Julian. It really scares me. <clears throat> During the summer of 2003, Wait, events in the northeastern I'm United States involving a strange human-like creature sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Little or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were mysteriously destroyed. Primarily focused in rural New York State. No, 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 no. Rural New York State. Boy, that's where I'm from. And once found in Idaho, self-proclaimed witnesses told stories of their encounters with a creature of unknown origin. Can we play more music? What the heck, man? Okay, 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 okay. It's my job. My, 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 my. Emotions ranged from extremely traumatic levels of fright and discomfort to an almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. Excuse me? While their published versions are no longer on record, the memories remained powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. In early 2006, the collaboration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents dating between the 12th century and, pre and present day, spanning four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I've been in contact with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. Wait, are these real stories? I'm I don't confused. know. <laughs> a suicide note, 1964. As I prepare to take my life, I feel it necessary to um, assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. Do we need to do like some sort of warning if I'm talking about suicide notes here? Trigger warning? Uh, probably. Just say it to be safe. Trigger Just, warning. Trigger yeah. warning. This, is, this next part is about suicide. Uh, Ma it's, maybe it, this, someone in the comments can put like a, a timestamp or something when the it's safe to listen to again. I would appreciate yeah. that. This, this looks to all be fictional. Just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, for once I awoke and felt his presence. And once I awoke and saw his form. Once again, I awoke and heard his voice and looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what might uh, next awake to experience. Me? What I might next awake to experience. Sorry. I, can never, I cannot ever wake. Goodbye. Found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose. And one loose personal letter with no envelope. Dearest Linny, I have, I have prayed for you. He spoke your name. A journal entry tr uh, translated from Spanish. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. They saw what me the and fuck? pierced me. Oh. His wet hand. Julian. I will not sleep. Why his does voice, his hand have to be wet? Unintelligible oh text. Why does his hand have to be wet? A Mariner's Log, 19, 1691. He came to, to me in, in my sleep. From the foot of my bed, I felt a sensation. Wait, no, now I have to be afraid of my bed? He took everything. We must return to England. We must not return here again at the request of the rake. The rake is what they called it. From a witness, 2006. Three years ago, I had returned from 2006? a trip. 2006? I had returned from a trip from... Niagara Falls. Stop! No, it's so fun there. Don't ruin Niagara With Falls. With my family for the 4th of July. Oh, the Canadian side is so much better. We were, we were all very exhausted after a long day of driving. So my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets only to wake him up in the process. I apologized to him and told him I thought he got out of bed. When he turned to me and faced me, he gasped 
and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. Then he grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting for the, to the dark for a half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting, facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man. Okay. Or okay. a large hairless dog <gasps> oh, of some sort. Julian, I really don't like this. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed, then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot away from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds or probably closer to five. It just seemed like a while. Just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway leading into the kids' rooms. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from my bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered oh, in blood. Hell no. Well, I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter, Clara. The, the creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke to us, spoke only once more in her short life. She said, he is the rake. My husband drove his car to the lake that night while rushing our daughter to the hospital. They did not survive. Wait, what? Being in a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and local television news never followed up either. So the husband and the daughter died. Mm Mm-hmm. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be the accounts of the rake. None of them give any details, history or follow-up. One journal entry um, involved the creature in its first three pages and then never mentioned it again. A ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying that it, they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. They were, however, There were, however, many instances when the creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. Okay, no, 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 no. You're not going to come back here. M- multiple You're not going to come back here with that wet hand. You're not going to come back here with that wet hand. Wait, so he just randomly chooses a person. Let's just think about this for one second. Okay, okay. So we don't know if these stories are true or not. No, they're no, they're just, not true. They're it's, definitely not true. It's, it's, it, babe, You're it's, telling it's me. It's fictional. Come on. That this slimy naked man Bloody. Just, choo- Ooh, just chooses someone's bedroom to just show up butt ass naked in <laughs> and then kill. And he, he wants to kill kids too. I can see an emote happening from this this look. <laughs> no, I'm like, stop. stop. I'm scared. Okay. I'm like je- like part of that story was making me physically nauseous. Like I'm getting sc- I'm fucking scared. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah. I don't fuck off. I don't like I don't like it. <laughs> Come on. And I particularly do not like the description of his wet hand. His wet hand. I don't I want none of that sentence. All right. <clears throat> that was 2006 in Niagara Falls. I feel like I would have heard about it. I it, call malarkey. Um, I forget if I read this part, but the, I stayed at a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we read that part. Um, there were, however, many instances of multiple visits to the same person. Yeah. Multiple no, people wh- like, why also are you mentioned back to me. Mo- multiple people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led to uh, this led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder but near he my bed. Doesn't kill them. Right, sorry, go ahead. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night for two weeks. Fuck I would that. tediously scan through the sounds of the of me rolling through the bed each day when I woke up. He could By just like put it s- into a, a program and see if there's any peaks in the audio. No, you know, they had to do it tediously. Those. Okay. Get out of here with that logic. Mm. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while 
blur, blurring through the sound. They're recording at eight times the normal speed. This almost took an hour every day. Oh, wow. So much work. <laughs> You're making fun of a fictional person going through fictional audio? On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone else listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe it spoke when, I was, when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that have must gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the rake since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. Oh, fuck no. I know and fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me. Dun dun. Is that the end? That was it. Thank God. That I've was the rake. I've had enough of that man's wet hand. I really have. On the on the category page, there's one that says disappearances, but it's spelled disappearances. <laughs> Read me some disappearances. 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 Bibi. you want some disappearance? I was just checking to see if the other web page is still down, and it is. So let's check a different one. Classics? Let's go to classics. Let's not. The Russian sleep experiment. Okay. Wait, mm. wait. What? Didn't, I think I've heard of that. Have you? I think I've heard that one. Yes. Can I read it? or? Okay. Well, if you've heard of it, I mean, it just sounds interesting. Yeah, I've definitely heard this. We might have even done this one on the podcast or talked about it on the podcast. Oh, then... in. In an attempt to not do the same thing twice, I yeah. guess we'll do a different one. Ben drowned. Squidward suicide with that? Okay. It's a well-known creepypasta and later an alternate reality game known as the Jadaza Bowl. The story revolves around Majora's mask cartridge, cartridge that is haunted by the ghost. If, if it is a ghost, the boy name is Ben. This what is about are you video, saying? This is about video... I was just reading the quick synopsis. It's about video games, a video game cartridge... Majora's Mask. Okay, I'll read it. September 10th, 7th, oh, 2010. Almost my birthday. Virgo season. It's coming season. up. The deep, anniversary's coming up. Deep in Virgo season. Okay, go on. I'm listening. Okay, X. I need your help with this. This is not my this is not copy pasta. This is a long read. Oh god, wait, let me just check. <laughs> Holy god. Okay. Are we in for this or Okay. How long is it? Let's go. Yeah, fuck it. It'll just be a long read. It's a long read, but I feel like my safety or well-being could very well depend on this. Okay. This is a video game related, specifically Majora's Mask. And I'm this is the down. creepiest shit that has ever happened to me in my entire life. What's Majora's Mask? Is that a real game? I think it's a Zelda game. I've never played it. I think it's a Zelda game. I could be wrong and I could be upsetting everybody. I could also be upsetting everybody by not knowing for sure that it's a Zelda game. So I'll either way, it. I apologize. Oh, my phone's a ten percent battery. If we don't get to, keep why do you not charge your phone so while we sleep, upset. like other people? Because I was busy. What playing Hearthstone? Yeah. How do I spell Majora's Mask? M A J O R A. Having said that, I recently moved the into The Legend my, of Zelda, Majora's Mask. You're I right. recently moved into my dorm room starting as a sophomore in college, and a friend of mine gave me his old N64 to play. I was stoked, to say the least. I could finally mm. play all those games of my Same. youth that I hadn't touched in at least a decade. Same. His N64 came with one yellow controller and a rather shoddy cop, copy of Super Smash Brothers. Fun. And while beggars can't be choosers, needless to say, it didn't take long until I became bored of beating up level 9 CPUs. Damn, Damn, this guy's owning. You didn't have to flex on us like that. That weekend, I decided to drive around a few neighborhoods about 20 minutes or so off campus, hitting up the local garage sales, hoping to score on some good deals from ignorant parents. <laughs> okay. I'm, st I ended I'm up starting to decide up, I don't really like this person. I ended up picking story. up a copy of Pokemon Stadium Goldeneye, fuck yeah, <laughs> F-Zero, and two other controllers for $2. Satisfied, I began to drive out of, my, out of the neighborhood when one last house caught my attention. I still have no idea why it did. 
There were no cars there, and only one table was set up with random junk on it. But something sort of drew me there. I usually trust my gut on these things, so I got out of the car and I was greeted by an old man. His outward appearance was, for lack of a better word, displeasing. It was odd. If you asked me to tell you why I thought he was displeasing, I couldn't really pinpoint anything. There was just something about him that put me on edge. I can't explain it. All I can tell you is that if it wasn't in the middle of the afternoon and there were other people within shouting distance, I would not have even thought of approaching this man. He flashed a crooked smile at me and asked what I was looking for. And immediately I noticed in games. that he must be blind in one of his eyes. Y'all got Zelda? His right eye had this glazed over look about it. I forced myself to look into his left eye, trying not to offend, and asked him if he had any old video games. I was already wondering how I could politely excuse myself from the situation when he, was, when he would tell me that he had no video games or didn't know what they were. But to my surprise, he said he had a few ones in an old box. He assured me that he'd be back in a jiffy and turned to head back to his garage. As I watched him hobble away, I couldn't help but notice what he was selling on his table. Littered across the table were rather peculiar paintings, various artworks that looked like ink blots that a psychiatrist might show you, like Rorschach. Mm -hmm. You get that joke. That's not a joke. You get that reference. Yes, I do. Curious, I looked through them. It was obvious why no one was visiting this guy's garage sale. It sounds like it fucking sucked. Uh, These weren't exactly aesthetically pleasing. As I came to the last one, for some reason, it looked almost like Majora's Mask. The same heart-shaped body with the little spikes protruding outward. Initially, I thought it was that since I was secretly hoping to find that game in a garage sale. Some Freudian bullshit was projecting itself onto the inkblots. I don't think that's how that works. Uh, But given the events that happened afterward, I'm not so sure. I should have asked this man about it. I wish I would have asked this man about it. After staring at the Majora-shaped blot, I looked up and the old man was suddenly there again. His arm, arm's length in front of me, smiling at me. I'll admit I jumped out of reflex and laughed nervously as he handed me a, a Nintendo 64 cartridge. It was a standard gray color, except that someone had written Majora on it in the back in permanent marker. Um, uh, in black permanent marker, sorry. I got butterflies in my stomach because I realized what coincidence this was, and I asked him how much he wanted for it. The old man smiled at me and told me that I could have it for free. That it used to belong to a kid who was about my age that didn't live here anymore. There's something weird about how he phrased that. But I didn't really pay any attention to it then. I was too caught up in only finding this game. Not only finding this game, but getting it for fucking free. Let's go. Let's go. Why don't you just buy it online if you want it that bad? It was in 2010. They didn't have the internet back then. Yeah, we had had fucking eBay, bitch. They didn't have the internet back in 2010. I reminded myself to be a bit skeptical since this looked like a pretty shady cartridge and there's no guarantee it would work. But then blow on it, blow the on optimist it, blow inside on it, blow me it, interjected it. that maybe it was some kind of beta version or pirated version of love the game. Love a beta, love a beta. Blow on that beta version. Wow. Um, and that all it was needed... Uh, and that... That was all I needed to be back on cloud nine. I thanked the man and the man smiled at me and wished me well saying goodbye then. At least that's what it sounded like to me. All the way in my car ride home, I had a nagging doubt that the man had said something else. My fears were confirmed when I booted up the game. To my surprise, it worked just fine. And there was one save file named simply Ben. Goodbye, Ben, he was saying. He was saying goodbye, Ben. I just got chills. I, felt ba- I did too. I felt bad for the man. Obviously a grandparent or obviously going senile. I, for some reason or another, reminded him of his grandson, Ben. Oh my God, that creeped me out. Out of curiosity, I looked at the safe file. Eyeballing it, I could tell he was pretty far into the game. He had almost all the masks and three, four uh, remains of the bosses. I noticed that he had... Boopy, good baby. Yeah, I think she's good. Okay. I noticed that he had on an owl statue to save his game. He was on day three and by the stone tower temple with hardly an hour left before the moon would crash. I remember thinking that it was a shame that he had come so close to beating the game, but he never finished it. I made a new file named Link out of tradition and starting the game ready to relive my childhood. For such a shady looking game cartridge, I was impressed at how smoothly it ran. Literally just like a retail copy of the game. Uh, Save for a few minor hiccups here and there, like textures being where they shouldn't be random flashes of cutscenes at odd intervals, but nothing too bad. 
However, the only thing that was a little unnerving was that at times the NPCs would call me Link. And at other times, they would call me Ben. Okay, you know what? I figured it was just a bug, Mm. a fluke in the programming causing our files to get mixed up or something. Did kind of creep me out though after a while. And it was around after I had beaten the Woodfall Temple that I regrettably went into the save files and deleted Ben. I had intended to preserve the file just out of respect for the game's original owner. It's not like I needed two files anyway, hoping that it wouldn't it would solve the problem. It did, and it didn't. Now NPCs wouldn't call me anything. Where my name should be in the dialog box, there was just a blank space. My save file was still called Link, though. Frustrated, and with homework to do, I put the game down for a day. I started playing the game again last night, getting the lens of truth and working my way towards completing the Snowhead Temple. Now, some of you are more hardcore Majora's Mask players and know about the fourth day glitch. Me as fuck. For those who don't, you can Google it, but the gist of it is that right as the clock's about to hit 0000000 000 on the final day, you talk to the astronomer and look through the telescope. If you time it right, the countdown disappears and you essentially have another day to finish whatever you were doing. Deciding to do the glitch and try to finish the Snowhead Temple, I happened to get it right on the first try and the timer count disappeared. However, when I pressed B to exit the telescope, instead of being greeted by the astronomer, I found myself in the Majora boss fight room at the end of the game, the trippy boxed-in arena, staring at Skull Kid hovering above me. There was no sound, just him floating in the air above me, and the background music, was, which was regular for the area, but still creepy. Immediately, my palms began to sweat. This was definitely not normal. Skull Kid never appeared here. I tried moving around the area, no matter where I went, what? It's just shaking the whole room. Oh, no. Am I nervously doing that? Mm-hmm. I don't care. It's, I have to. <laughs> Nothing would happen. Um, and this kept up for around 60 seconds. I thought the game was bugged or something, but I was beginning to doubt that very much. I was about to reach for the reset button when text appeared on my screen. You're not sure why, but you apparently had a reservation. I instantly recognized that text. You get that message when you get the room key from Anju at the Stockpot Inn. But why was it playing here? I refused to entertain the notion that it was almost as if the game was trying to communicate with me. I started to navigate the room again, testing to see if it was some sort of trigger that enabled me to interact with something here. Then I realized how stupid I was to even think that someone could reprogram the game. Like, that was absurd. Sure enough, 15 seconds later, another message appeared on the screen. And again, like the first one, it was already a pre-existing phrase. Go to the lair of the temple's boss, yes or no? I paused for a second, contemplating. What should I press, and how would the game react? When I realized that I couldn't select no, taking a deep breath, I pressed yes, and the screen faded to white, with the words, dawn of a new day, and the subtext looks like like I, capital I, like five times or six times beneath it, or just lines, I don't know if they're lines. Okay. No, I can't stop doing I can't stop shaking my leg. You're shaking the entire room. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm nervous. Let me be nervous. Ugh. Fine, I'll I'll stop. Where I was ported to fill where I was ported to filled me next. Where I was ported to filled me next with the most intense sense of dread and impounding fear impending fear I had ever experienced. The only way I could describe the way I felt here is having this feeling of inexplicable inexplicable depression on a profound scale. I'm not normally a depressed person, but the way I felt here was a feeling that I didn't even know existed. It was such a twisted, powerful presence that seemed to wash over me. I appeared in some kind of Twilight Zone version of Clock Town. I walked out of the clock tower as you normally do when you start day one, only to find out that all the inhabitants were gone. Usually with the fourth day glitch, you can still find the guards and the dogs that run around the tower. This time, they were all gone. What replaced them was the ominous feeling that there was something out there, in the same area as me, and that it was watching me. I had four hearts to my name and the hero's bow, but at this point I wasn't even considered... I wasn't even considered for my avatar. Concern, maybe he meant? I don't know. I felt that personally, I was in some kind of danger. Perhaps the most chilling thing was the music. It was the song of healing ripped straight from the game itself, but played in reverse. Okay, fuck that. The music would get louder, building up 
So, so if you should expect something to pop out in front of you, but nothing ever did. And the constant loop began to wear on my mental state. Every now and then I would hear the faint laugh of the happy mask salesman in the background. Just quiet enough so that I wasn't sure if I was hearing things, but just loud enough to keep me determined to find him. I looked in all four zones of Clocktown only to find nothing. No one. Textures were missing. West Clocktown had me walking on air. The entire area felt broken. Hopelessly broken. As the reverse song of healing repeated for what must have been the 50th time, I just remember standing in the middle of Clocktown realizing that I had never felt so alone in a video game before. As I walked through the ghost town, I don't know whether it was a combination of the out-of-place textures and the atmosphere and the haunting melody of the once peaceful and soothing song being butchered and distorted, but I was literally on the verge of tears, and I had no idea why. I hardly ever cry. Something had gripped me here and was so powerful that this sense of depression was both foreign and crippling. I tried leaving Clocktown, but every time I attempted to zone out, the screen would fade to black, and I would just zone into another part of Clocktown. I tried playing my ocarina. I wanted to escape. I did not want to be here. But every time I played the song of time or the song of soaring, it would say, your notes echo far, but nothing happens. By this point, it was obvious that the game didn't want me to leave, but I had no idea why it was keeping me here. I didn't want to go inside the buildings. I felt that I would be too vulnerable to whatever was terrifying me. I don't know why, but I came up with this idea that maybe if I drowned myself in the laundry pool, I could spawn somewhere else and leave this place. As I zoned in and ran towards the pool, that's when it happened. Mm -mm. Link grabbed his head. The screen flashed for a brief moment of the happy mask salesman smiling at me. Not Link. Me with Skull Kids scream playing in the background. And when the screen returned, I was staring at the Link statue from playing the song Elegy. Elegy, elegy of emptiness. I screamed as the thing just stared back at me with that haunting facial expression. I turned around and ran back out of South Clocktown, and to my horror, the fucking statue followed me. The only way I could compare this is like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Don't, don't know what that is. Every so often at random intervals, the anim- animation would play the statue appearing behind me. It was like this thing was chasing me or I don't even want to say it was haunting me. By this point, I was on the verge of hysterics. Not once did the thought of turning off the console occur to me. I don't know why. I was so wrapped up in it. The terror felt so real. I tried to shake the statue, but it would literally appear right behind me every single time. Link started to begin to make weird animations I had never seen him do before. He would flail his arms around or spasm or randomly uh, the screen would cut to the happy mask salesman smiling again for a brief moment before I was face to face with that fucking statue again. I ended up running down the swords master do- running into the swords master dojo and ran into the back. I don't know why but my panic I just wanted some kind of assurance that I'm not alone here. To to my dismay I found no one. But as I turned to leave the statue cornered me in, in the cubby in the back. I tried attacking the statue with my sword but to no avail. Confused and backed into a corner I started staring at the statue waiting for it to kill me. Suddenly, the screen f- flashed again to the happy mask salesman, and Link turned my face, turned to my face screen, standing upright, mirroring the statue, looking at me along with his copy, literally staring at me. Whatever was left of the fourth wall was completely shattered. When, while I ran out of the dojo terrified, sun, suddenly the game warped me to an underground tunnel and the reverse song of healing queued up again as I was given a brief moment of rest before the statue started appearing behind me. This time aggressively. I could only take a few steps now before he, w- he would summon behind me again. I hurried and made my way out of the tunnel and appeared in Clock Town. As I ran aimlessly in sheer panic, suddenly a red, a, a re-dead screamed and faded to black as the dawn of the day and the I, I, I appeared again. The screen faded in and I was standing on top of Clock Terror with Skull Kid hovering over me silent. I looked up and the moon was back looming just meters above my head. But the Skull Kid just stared at me hauntingly with that fucking mask. A new song was playing. The Stone Tower Temple theme played in reverse. In some sort of desperate attempt, I equipped my bow and fired off a shot at Skull Kid. And it actually hit him, and he played the animation of him reeling back. I fired again, and on the third arrow, a text box appeared saying, that won't do any good here. He he. I was picked up off the ground, levitated on my back, and then Link screams as he burst into flames, instantly killing him. I jumped when this happened. 
I'd never seen anyone use this move on anyone in the game and Skull Kid himself didn't even have the moves. As the death screen played, my lifeless body was still burning. Skull Kid laughed and the screen faded to black, only to have me reappear in the same place. I decided to charge him, but the same thing happened. Link's body was lifted off the ground and some known, unknown force immediately burst him into flames again, killing him. This time, the death screen played the faint sounds of this a reverse song of healing that could be heard. On my third and final try, I noticed that there was no music playing this time. All that there was was this eerie silence. And I remember that the original encounter with Skull Kid, you were supposed to use the ocarina to either travel back in time or summon the giants. I attempted to play the song of time before I could hit the last note. The last note, Link's body once again horrifically exploded into flames and he died. As the death screen neared its end, I, it began to chug as if the cartridge was trying to process a lot of something. When the screen came to, it was the same scene as the first three times, except this time Link was lying on the ground, dead, in a position I had never seen in the game before. His head tilted towards the camera, with the Skull Kid floating above him. I couldn't move. I couldn't press any buttons. All I could do was stare at Link's dead body. After around 30 seconds of this, the game simply fades out with the message, You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Before kicking you out to the title screen. Upon getting back to the title screen and starting again, I noticed my save file was no longer there. Instead of Link, it was replaced with Your Turn. Your Turn had three hearts, zero masks, and no items, so I selected Your Turn. And immediately when I did, I was returned to the clock tower rooftop scene of my dead Link and the skull hovering above me. Skull Kid laughing and looping again and again, I quickly hit the reset button and the game booted up again. But there was one more save file added. Below Your Turn, it was Ben. Ben. Ben's save file is right back where it was before I deleted Bing. it. I turned the game off at that point. I'm not superstitious, but this is way too fucked up to even for even for me. I haven't played it all today. Hell, I didn't even get any sleep last night. I kept hearing the reverse song of healing music in my head and just remembering the sense of dread I felt exploring in Clocktown. I drove back to the old man's house today and asked to ask him some questions with a buddy of mine. No way was I going there alone only to find that there was a for sale sign in the front yard when I rang the doorbell. No one was home. So I'm back here now, writing the rest of my thoughts and recordings of what happened. Sorry if some of this has grammatical errors and whatnot. I'm running on no sleep here. I'm terrified of this game. Even more so now that I relived it a second time writing it all down. But I feel like there's more to it than meets the eye. And that there's something calling me to investigate this further. I think Ben is something with this e in this equation, but I don't know what. And if I could get a hold of the old man, then I would be able to find some answers. But I need another day or so to recuperate before tackling this game again. It's already taken a toll on my sanity, I feel like. But next time I do this, I'm going to re record all my footage. Where is it at, boy? The idea to record only came to me towards the end, so you'll see the last few minutes of what it looked like, what I saw, including Skull Kid and the Elegy statue, but it's on YouTube here. I'm going to stay in this thread for a little while longer before I fall asleep to answer any questions. Okay, and then there's a second post that's like an update, and it's there's a lot of posts, so I'm going to read the second post. Did you watch the YouTube video? Should I? Yeah, I'm going to see. Day 4.wmv. Maybe we can link this. Yeah, I can link it. Yep, anyway. Holy shit. That's trippy, dude. I mean, who... who really I don't know knows? if that's, like, part of the game, though. I have yeah, no idea. I don't know. Um, I'm scared, you beach. Where did it go? Where other story? Yeah, sorry, I gotta find it. I lost it. All right, let's uh, let's get to the next post. Sorry, this is taking a while, but I think it's good. I'm scared, you beach. 
Last night, everything got too real for me. I think I'm done messing around with this. I passed out pretty much immediately after making that thread. But last night, the elegy of emptiness statue, I had a dream about it. I dreamed that it was following me in my dream. That I'd be minding my own business when I'd feel neck hair stand up on, on end. My neck hair stand up on end. I would turn around and that thing, that horrible, lifeless statue would be staring at me with those empty eyes inches away. In my dream, I remember it calling me Ben. And I've never had a dream so vividly as that I could remember so vividly. Ben. Uh, today I put off playing the game as long as I could. I drove back to that neighborhood to see if the old man came back. As I expected, the car was still gone and no one was home. As I was walking back to my car, the man next door mowing his grass killed the mower and asked me if I was looking for someone. I told him I was looking to talk to the old man that lived there, to, to which he told me what I already knew. He was moving. Trying a different avenue, I asked if the old man had any family or relatives I could talk to. I discovered that this old man had never been married, nor did he have any children or grandchildren through adoption. So who the hell's Bing? Starting to become worried, I asked one final question. One that I should have asked from the beginning. Who was Ben? The man's expression turned grim and learned that four doors down. And I learned that four doors down around eight years ago on April 23rd, the man informed me that it was the same day as his anniversary. That's how he knew it was the specific date. There was an accident with a young boy named Ben in the neighborhood. Shortly after his parents moved, and despite any further attempts to talk to the man, to get more information, he wouldn't di divulge anything else. I went back and started playing again. I loaded up the game and immediately jumped in at the title screen where the mask flies by. The sound that was playing, that played was not the normal whoosh sound. It was something much more high, high pitched. I pressed start, bracing for the worst. And just like two nights ago, the files Your Turn and Ben were displayed. I brought up the Ben file. I'm trying to like get through this a little quicker. I'm scared. To like skip a little. Let's see. I kind of want to skip to the end. Okay. It's very long. It's super long. Okay. September 8th, 2010. I had a dream about that statue. I dreamt that it was following me in my dream and I would be minding my own business when I'd feel my neck hair stand up on end. Okay, yeah, he wrote that. I really don't want to play this game again. I think okay, these are, boy, I think these are just like, like summary posts here. I've been getting random inexplic inexplicable headaches due to the lack of sleep and hearing that song in my head. Also, it's flu season, so I need to be careful not to get sick. My computer just on its own opened up a text document and wrote the words, hi. Okay, nope. www.cleverbot.com by itself. What the fuck? I went to the website and it's one of those bot chatting programs and I think it's best if I just let the conversation speak for itself. User, hello. Cleverbot, hello. User, who is this and how are you able to control my computer? Cleverbot, who am I? User, right, forgot. You're a bot. Cleverbot, do you really think that? User, listen. I know who, whoever's fucking with my computer can see my screen right now. Cleverbot, yes. User. And I'll wager that one of those IT kids, you're one of those IT kids who thinks he's tough shit. Well, what you're doing right now is illegal. Cleverbot, is it? User, no shit. Are you familiar with terms of invasion of privacy? Get the fuck off my computer, kid. Cleverbot, I am your computer. User, cool story. Anyway, I'm calling DPS. You, feel, you picked a bad time to fuck with me. Cleverbot, should I wait until you play the game then? User, what? Clever about the game. User, Majora's Mask? Clever about, yeah. How did you know about that? Because. Because what? I did it. Did what? I played with you. What? What the fuck? Clever about, were you scared? Who the fuck is this? Clever about, Ben. User, the statue? You're inside my computer now? Yes. How? You connected me. How did I connect you? Cables and cords. Tell me about yourself. What? Tell me about yourself. User, what do you mean? What is it that really scares you? What? User, what the fuck? Clever bot. Answer. No. Answer. What the fuck? How did you just open that by yourself? I am your computer now. How much can you control? All. What do you want from me? To entertain. You're stuck inside there. You can't hurt me. Clever bot. Ha. What the fuck? Go play. No, you can't hurt me. Took you long to type that. So? You're not sure. 
If you're so powerful, why use a ridiculous website like this to chat with me? Less messy, more structured, fun. Fun? Yeah, tradition. I like it. You think it's funny? Amusing. In my notes? You may write them down. Why are you letting me? It's amusing to see what you think of me. Window closes. What the fuck? So now he starts seeing the statue in places, internet places. Like he's on the internet, he'll start to see the statue in places it shouldn't be. What the fuck? Mm Mm-hmm. Another conversation. Answer me, Ben. Clever bot. Welcome back. What's the point of doing this? Why? It's amusing. I wonder how you would have reacted. To what? If I hadn't revealed myself and stayed hidden, only doing little things to play with you. Close out your windows, turn off your computer, move your mouse by itself, little things. Make you wonder if I'm there, but you never know. Give you little hints. I wanted to do that with you. You did this before? Yeah, and I'll do it again. To who, Ben? Do you know Ben? I won't tell that information to you. How did Ben die? Clever about You know. No, but how, but how did he drown? I won't tell that to you. Why? It's reserved for another. Who? Another who asks. When? Later. Windows closed. My room is feeling different again. There's something out there. I really feel threatened. Like there's something trying to reach out and strangle me, but I can't quite get there. 12.46 p.m. I think Ben doesn't want to play with me anymore. I'll play again. I'll play the game again. Ben, can you see this? I'll play the game again. Just stop, please, please. I'm going insane trying to decide what's real and what isn't. Is Ben just playing a trick on me or is this for real? Is Ben generating these replies or are these actually postings for, or is he act, people actually posting them? Did I just see that screen flicker or was it my imagination? Imagine depending on the internet and trusting your eyes for your entire life and then being blinded. You can't rely on it anymore. You second guess everything. For brief moments, I am looking at my responses um, to, uh, to the videos. People were pointing out things that looked fake or photoshopped or whatever. And there's literally no way for me to know if Ben changed something on purpose to try to shut me up. Oh my God. All right, it's coming to an end. Let's get to September 10th. The drowned WMV playthrough was up when I woke up today. I remember typing it up, but I don't ever remember posting it. He censored it again. There's no mentioning of the old man. I have no voice anymore. I'm only posting what he wants me to. I am the mask he uses to disguise himself as he lies. There's an entire video summary of a video that I don't remember doing. Reading through the summary, this sounds morbid, resembling my dream from two nights ago, except on a far more sadistic scale. These moon children, there were, there's something more to them, almost as if they're another entity from Ben. Something happened last night that I can't remember. I'm posting my fourth summary to the forums now. <clears throat> ben won't let me visit YouTube. I can browse the rest of the sites, but he keeps exiting the window when I go to YouTube. Why? I'm starting to feel the air constrict. I don't feel like I'm alone here. Whatever aura has been here is getting more violent. I'm trying to contact Ben on Cleverbot. He's not responding. I just get the AI. My ears aren't fooling me. I'm hearing the reverse song of healing. I keep hearing it. Now I'm positive I hear it. 4.23 uh, p.m. Earlier I thought it was a weird coincidence, but now I went to open my window and three floors down at ground level I saw the old man. I'm completely positive I did. The same guy. He was just staring up at my window. If any students took notice of him, they didn't seem to acknowledge it. That's where my notes end. I fled my room, taking the cartridge with me. I I don't want to go into details of what happened. I'll lose my train of thought as I hammer out these last details. It's been a rough two days since then. This is my last summary and service to you of the final video you guys saw. Matt, WMV. The last video entry I made, Matt, WMV, began began as normal. I was spawned in clock town as usual, and nothing seemed to be out of place. Determined to set things right and play the oath in order... Uh, uh, I prepared myself, sped up time, and got to the final day, making my way to the observatory. I got to this telescope room and approached the astronomer. He would not let me look into his telescope. He told me that I would be cheating and that I should follow the rules. Despite my repeated efforts, the game would not let me do the fourth day glitch, no matter how hard I tried. Um, It eventually told me to go to Icona Canyon, where the game would end and it would stop haunting me. Anxious and desperate to end this nightmare, I played the song of uh, soaring and ended up there. I was told to check my inventory. 
that I would find answers there in the end of the game. I arrived at the canyon and saved my progress at the owl statue. As I searched my inventory, I finally noticed that there was a missing, I was missing a recurring song, the Elegy of Emptiness. Once I traveled there and learned the song, I remember it. I suppose that was the last thing I needed before Ben decided it had enough fun playing games with me. Ben is a manipulator. He tries to fool his victims into security and makes you drop your guard like a Venus flytrap. Then he ensnares them. I'm nothing but a puppet to him. He enjoys seeing what kind of human emotions he can tap into by playing different things. I'm scared. There are still some things that don't make sense about the whole thing, but then again, I was never good at figuring these things out. I'm typing these closing thoughts on the library computer of the campus, and I've emailed myself the notes I've stored on my infected computer from the last four days. I'm then going to combine the notes and copy and paste them with closing and openings that I've had on here. I'm not taking any chances spreading Ben. I wouldn't wish this horrible torment on anyone. I've made sure to have my bases covered here. I didn't run into any problems with Ben when I was back on my computer trying to email myself the notes. He has no idea what he just let me do. I had no problems opening the text document from my infected computer on the email. I can't describe how it feels to finally be able to get the word out about this post. The nightmare ends here. That said, I do not download any of my videos or anything about my videos through a YouTube video or audio ripper, a screen grab, whatever. Just don't know how he can spread. But I know that just watching him on YouTube reading my text won't allow him to spread. Otherwise, he would strongly, he would, he would have needed my help in the first place, but I strongly recommend you do not take anything you see streaming online to your own personal computer. This will be my last posting. I'm putting up a forum here f for the world. If you see any further posts from me after today's current date, September 12th, and after this current time, 12.08 a.m., discredit them. It's already been proven to me that Ben can access my account password and manipulate my computer, and I have no idea to what extent this works. He's desperate. To ensure your safety, just forget about me, please. And obviously, this goes without saying from here on out, but do not download anything that I have put up, anything at all. The fifth day will be my last day. I'm going to burn the cartridges and then come back to destroy my laptop. Again, even though I don't know you, this is sort of bittersweet for me. This semester, I didn't have any friends, or rather, I stopped paying attention to them. But I suppose that's partially to blame because I'm the genius who picked to live in a sh single, I suppose, someone... In a single. I suppose someone to get a hold of me and save me before I got too immersed in the game would have literally saved my life. However, it proved too much for me. I'm just glad it happened to me and I could get the warnings out so that Ben dies here. Lastly, thank you for taking the time to open this and open yourselves up by believing me and hearing my story despite, despite even if you don't believe me. You didn't have to do that, really. You shouldn't have. Your support the entire time has kept me going and now I'm finally free of this. Thanks again. Jaduzable. The end. I'm scared. That was very long. Yeah. That's kind of a crazy concept though, of like someone who died and then takes over a video game. The and weird the weird thing about that one is like I think it was made to feel real. Like with the with all the um the YouTube videos and stuff. Like I don't know what that was. Mm-hmm. What was that? I don't know. It's fucking creepy, is what it is. Because like we pulled it up on my phone. I'll link I'll link the whole page. But we pulled it up my phone, and there's a video of the link burning in the in the game. I've never played that game, so I don't know what it's supposed to look like. But yeah, it's just after reading the story, yeah, it sounds creepy and it looks creepy. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. It is creepy. It's creepy pasta. <gasps> creepy pasta, baby. Oh, uh, uh, uh. yeah. I mean, that was long, but it was really cool. I mean, it, was, it is a cool story. It's like for all the video games we play, it definitely. I guess up to Doesn't you whether or not safe. you believe it or not. It's a Sammy glue. Ben Drowned. That's the name of the story. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It's all fake. Or it's real. Just don't play Zelda. Or don't download his videos. I would say listen to what he said. <laughs> don't, don't download his videos. Maybe he just doesn't want you to download his videos. Yeah, maybe. And he made that whole thing up. And I can finally take my sweatshirt off. Do you feel safe with that on your head? Yeah. It's my safe place. Well, this was interesting and fun. If you guys have any... This is our first time reading any sort of creepy pasta. But if you have any specific ones you want us to read, we could totally do this again. Yeah, it was fun. I just don't want to hear about his wet hand. 
ever again. Thank you. Stop. Don't touch me. Kermit, get him. Kermit, sick. <laughs> Falls asleep. Kermit, get him. Well, if you stayed that entire time, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you have um, yeah. a good rest of your week and we'll be back next week with another podcast. Probably not creepy stuff, but we'll do another we'll do another part of this if you guys want at some point. Just let us know in the comments and um Yeah. Hell be yeah. good. Have a good week. We'll see you on the next I'm one. I'm scared. Goodbye.